uh, so, Ms. Franklin, you you are the cousin of a. Uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Dr. Donald Smith, can you tell us a little? Well, first of all, what do you do? Because you made a very interesting uh, uh, talk in there. Sure. So I work for an early college network um, called Bard Early Colleges. Essentially, we offer collegiate education to well, appropriate, accurate, and culturally responsive education to populations that historically have been underserved. Mm -hmm. um, so we have schools in um, the United States and we have also one in China as well. Um, my goal is on, as uh, the program associate to the dean of the early colleges is to look at curriculum and ensure that it's culturally responsive mm -hmm. um, and culturally appropriate also. Um, and we look at equity markers across our network and ensure that we are maintaining our mission, um, but also maintaining that the quality of the education and the support of the, the students that we serve. Because at the end of the day, sincerely, we can have a neoliberal conversation all day long about you know the white savior complex, but sincerely adhering to our mission fully. Mm -hmm. um, and so my job is to ensure the curriculum um, uh, is, uh, is at par. But you mentioned it because you you get a, a very interesting talk. Uh, how was you influenced by your by your cousin? I mean, you, you, this is part of your lineage, is basically, basically what you're saying. It is. It is. It's interesting as growing. So growing up, I had a plethora of role models that talked about like excellence and achievement and loving oneself, regardless of how, how other people label you. And as a mixed race woman of color. Um, as a mixed race black woman of color in particular, growing up with a light-skinned black man uh, at my ear, telling me to in, be empowered, to never let anyone um, instill notions of success and identity upon me. That's what I carry into my classroom with my students. I walk into my classroom empowering my students to be authentically nothing but themselves and completely unapologetic. Um, and I think that's something Cousin Don has always instilled in me is that never to apologize for being oneself and you already born with greatness it's about ev truly evolving those skills um, and I think about that every single day when I'm having a, when I'm having a rough day and a, a student of mine tells me x y and z and the other I'm I'm not black I'm not African or you know I don't have purpose or I'm always going to be in the position that I'm in I I think about the words that he said, like the words that I grew up hearing, which is we have the power to control ourselves internally and how we view ourselves, and that's the start. Um, systemic inequity is always going to be a thing, unfortunately, but we can change that. And so when I, when I teach, and when I'm in my classroom, when I, when I look at our curriculum, and I speak with my bosses, I think about how instead of saving someone, how we should be empowering someone instead. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm bringing. Surely. Uh, one, one, well, two, two things, actually. Uh, tell, us who, tell us who your cousin was exactly. My cousin was Donald H. Smith, Dr. Donald H. Smith, um, educator, pioneer, activist, um, intellectual. And then in my personal mind, someone who could write <laughs> prose on prose of philosophy. Um, but he was a dreamer. That's, mm -hmm. that's why I describe him as. And, and what was his legacy? I mean, he was here at Brew College, but what else did he? Where else was he? I mean, he changed the foundations of, he changed the foundation of Chicago education, period. Mm -hmm. um, he helped ensure that the next generation of students, regardless of their race, their creed, or whatever it may be, had access to an education that truly was fulfilling and equitable, for the lack of a better term. He mm -hmm. held people to their word, to their mission, to ensure that everyone has access to an adequate education and to succeed in whatever means that they so desire. And he did that no matter where he went. He did that in Chicago, he did that in New York, he did that <laughs> in all parts in Texas, and I think of in New Jersey. So you name a place, but to everyone else's points, the legacy um, also, he inspired generations of black educators to, to not not only be within the systems of, you know, deconstruct and um, deconstruct systems of whiteness, but also build systems um, of our own to ensure our legacy of excellence is secure as well. Okay, thank you so very much. Would you do me one, more, one last favor? You read a, you wrote, read a quote from uh, James Baldwin. Mm -hmm. Do you have it available? Can, can, can you just, 
uh, because I just like to. You say something very interesting afterwards, but uh, I just like to hear it uh, again. I suppose you know of course, of the, the lecture is ending, but it would be really, uh, really nice. Of course. And how, how many how many st uh, students do you usually teach at one time? Is it a small class, big class? Thirty. Thirty. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> right. Right. There we go. <laughs> Um, life is tragic simply because the earth turns and the sun inextricably uh, rises and sets and one day for each of us the sun will go down for the last last time. Perhaps the whole root of our trouble, the human trouble, is that we will sacrifice all the beauty of our lives, will imprison ourselves in totems, taboos, crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, nations, in order to deny the fact of death, the only fact we have. It seems to me that one ought to rejoice in the fact of death, ought to decide indeed to earn one's death by confronting with passion the conundrum of life. One is responsible for life. It is the small beacon in that terrifying darkness from which we come and to which we shall return. Ms. Franklin, tell us once again your, your entire name and, what, and your title, I guess. My name is Lagaya Chavez Franklin, um, and my professional life, I'm a program associate with the uh, Barter Ecologist. Thank you so much. Thank you.